hello everyone so in the previous videos we have discussed about the uh, life process so different types of life processes we have discussed and in this one we will be going with the detailed explanation of the life process so the first one we will be discussing about the nutrition so what uh, the first thing that comes to our mind uh, when we think about nutrition then what is nutrition so first we have to answer that question what is nutrition so the process of taking in or consuming foods and utilizing the foods for the production of energy and growth and repair and maintenance of the body is known as nutrition so we take food or we consume the food and we have to and the utilization of that food for the production of energy and as well as for the growth repair and maintenance of the body is known as nutrition so it's a complex complex process uh, in which we need to consume food and we have to utilize the food for the production of energy and for the growth repair and maintenance of the body so here you can see one bodybuilder is there and he is consuming food so why is he consuming the food to build his body so to build muscles to build his body he needs to eat good amount of food similar here also you can see that a bicyclist is drinking some sort of drink so it's not like water so it's uh, some sort of energy drink so that person is drinking while riding the bicycle because to get energy and to make the uh, cycle uh, to run fast so it needs to take some sort of energy so during the race also it is taking the energy drink to move the cycle faster so we need uh, food uh, or to utilize the food for energy and for maintenance of the body and for repairing the body and for the growth of the body so this is known as nutrition so there are basically two types of nutrition so when we think uh, about nutrition uh, that uh, there are two types the first type is autotrophic nutrition and another one is heterotrophic nutrition so these things you have learned in your uh, class 6 7 in class 8 in those classes you have learned about that so in those classes you learned about little you got the little glimpse of the uh, about nutrition but in this class 10 you will get the detailed explanation of those uh, topics so first one is autotrophic nutrition so what is autotrophic nutrition first the process of nutrition in which the organism prepares their own food by using certain process such as photosynthesis or chemosynthesis so by using certain process like photosynthesis or chemosynthesis some uh, organisms are there they prepare their own food and that process of nutrition is known as autotrophic nutrition so here you can see one plant is here so it is a plant uh, so it uh, it prepares its own food it does not need to go anywhere to get its food it remains in its place and it uses some thing uh, some of the materials like carbon dioxide water sunlight and it prepares its own food and it gets its nutrition so this type of nutrition is known as autotrophic nutrition so then we have uh, so first thing uh, that comes to our mind uh, that what is photosynthesis so we have uh, used the term it's a very big term we have used the term photosynthesis then what is it we need to explain it so in uh, lower classes like class 6 and 7 we got the concept of photosynthesis there we defined it like that uh, the process by which uh, plants prepare its own food so that like that like this way we have defined it the process by which plants prepare its own food so that definition is okay no problem but uh, we have to upgrade ourselves because now we are in class 10 and we have to upgrade the definition also so the uh, on how we will define uh, this is the upgraded version for class 10 and higher classes the process by which plants use water and carbon dioxide to prepare glucose with the help of sunlight is called photosynthesis so this is a very simple kind of definition but upgraded one the process by which plants use water and carbon dioxide to prepare glucose with the help of sunlight is called photosynthesis so plants use water that water comes from the uh, soil and, and carbon dioxide which comes from the atmosphere so plants use these two things water and carbon dioxide and prepare it uh, and uses these two things to prepare glucose so glucose is the main food for the plant so it prepares it with the help of sunlight so without sun, uh, sunlight the plants cannot use water and glucose uh, sorry water and carbon dioxide to prepare glucose so it needs the sunlight to 
use the water and carbon dioxide to prepare glucose and that process is known as photosynthesis so there is a very important equation for photosynthesis so what is it carbon dioxide you see it see here carbon dioxide h2o that is water so plants use these two things and with the help of sunlight uh, plants prepare glucose so what this is the formula of glucose c6 h12o6 so plants prepare these things this thing with the help of these two things with the help of sunlight and along with that some byproducts are also formed like h2o and oxygen so the main thing is here the glucose and along with this glucose some other products or byproducts are formed and these are water and oxygen so these two are byproducts not the primary products primary product is this glucose <coughs> So this is very important. So in this one is not a like um, uh, balanced equation. So in chapter one uh, of your chemistry, you will learn about balancing. After that, you can balance it easily. Now I have not done it because without knowing the balancing, you should not do it. Uh, uh, so in the chapter one, when we will do it, then we can uh, so uh, balance it afterwards. The next. Uh, so what happens exactly in photosynthesis? So in class 9 we got the concept of plant cells and animal cells so plant cell you you can remember i guess uh, very important uh, structure was there in plant cell very unique structure was present and that was chloroplast so when we wrote the difference between plant cell and animal cell one point was there in plant cell chloroplast is present in animal cell chloroplast is absent so what is chloroplast so chloroplast is a very unique structure present in plant cell it is uniquely present only in plant cells and what is there inside so inside the uh, chloroplast we have different structures like uh, stroma then we have this gray and all so and inside the chloroplast we have a green color pigment and that is known as uh, chlorophyll so chlorophyll is one of the one type of uh, green color pigment that is present inside the chloroplast and it is the most important thing for photosynthesis because this chloroplast accepts the uh, sunlight or absorbs the sunlight when sunlight falls on the leaves it is absorbed by the chlorophyll and it is used by the chloroplast or chlorophyll to prepare glucose or prepare the food for the plant so next then some events take place during photosynthesis so what are these events very important question so mainly three events that take place during the photosynthesis what are that absorption of light energy by chlorophyll so sunlight is absorbed by the chlorophyll we know that so this is that uh, point that sunlight is absorbed by the uh, chlorophyll or the light energy that is sunlight sunlight uh, light energy is absorbed by the chlorophyll and then conversion of this light energy into chemical energy so we know that uh, from that uh, law of uh, conservation of energy that energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be transformed from one form to another so light energy we cannot create any, any other kind of chemical energy so we have to we, uh, we can only convert the energy to another form so light is one form of energy and it is transformed into chemical energy with the, by the plant or by the chlorophyll and splitting of water molecule into hydrogen and water sorry hydrogen and oxygen so water molecule we have this h2o so when the sunlight falls on the leaf it splits the water molecule that is h2o into hydrogen and oxygen that is known as photolysis Photolysis is breakdown of water into hydrogen and oxygen and reduction of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. So in carbon dioxide we have this carbon and oxygen and reduction is a process in which hydrogen is uh, added. So in carbohydrates or glucose, carbohydrate is one form, uh, glucose is one, one form of uh, carbohydrate. So in that one what we have C6H12O6, C carbon we have, hydrogen we have and oxygen we have. So carbon dioxide is reduced means hydrogen is added to carbon dioxide. To form carbohydrate or glucose so these are the three important events that takes place during the photosynthesis so next is very important uh, that concept of stomata is very important in class 9 also you have, you have got the concept but here i will again we will discuss this so if we take your leaf and if we see the under surface of the leaf uh, normally we can see one green color thing and some veins are there but under the microscope we can see some other things so if we put the uh, leaf under the microscope and if we observe the under surface we can see some holes or some small pores present in the under surface so it is also present sometimes on the upper surface also but normally it is mostly present in the under surface so these small pores or small holes present 
uh, in the uh, surface of leaf is known as stomata there are small holes or small pores and these are known as stomata so what is the main function of these stomata so small pores are like the noses we have so in case of human beings we have nose and through that nose we take the oxygen and we leave the carbon dioxide so it is uh, like uh, in plants they do not have the nose so they have this structure that is known as stomata and through that they do the exchange of gases so they take in carbon dioxide and releases oxygen through that uh, stomata so how does it looks like so if you see this structure here so this pores uh, uh, this pore is known as stomatal pore or stomata and along with this one you can see two small uh, cells are there you can see here also to, in this picture also you can see the, like we have a bulging outward something and these are nothing but two cells are guarding the stomata so these two cells are known as guard cells they are guarding the stomata and or they are surrounded by the or the stomata is surrounded by the guard cells so this uh, middle portion is known as stomata and along with uh, and on the two sides of this uh, stomata we have the surrounding cells or guard cells so what are the structure of these uh, or what is sorry what is the function of these guard cells so guard cells normally do the uh, in help uh, in helping the uh, in help in closing and opening the stomata so in closing the stomata and opening the stomata these guard cells help why does this stomata needs to be closed or why does it needs to be open so it it, it remains open or sometimes it becomes it gets closed why because normally it does it helps in the exchange of gases and along with that one it also uh, loses some water through it so in plants in plants body a lot of water is there and pl uh, plants loses some water through this stomatal pore and if this stomatal pore remains open throughout all the time so, um, all the water of the plant from the plant's body may get lost so this stomatal pore needs to be needs to get closed in order to save water for the plant so how does it 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 gets closed and how does it gets open so in this next picture we can see so he, these are the guard cells we have in the two sides so when water comes in so this this is given like a water so when water comes inside the guard cells the stomata becomes swollen the size of the stomata becomes weak and the <coughs> sorry the size of the guard cells become weak and the pore in in between these two cells become weak and we can say now the stomata is open so when water rushes into the guard cells and they become swollen um, the uh, the stomata gets open and when it needs to get it closed when there is no need of gaseous exchange and there is no need of losing of or losing of water so what will happen the plant or the guard cell will release the water and the stomata will shrink and so the guard cells will shrink and the clump of stomata will get ultimately closed so this is uh, how the stomata is stomata gets open and gets closed so this uh, <coughs> this is in the case of the stomata next we have the concept of heterotrophic nutrition so basically we were discussing about the autotrophic nutrition till the last slide and in this one we will be discussing about the heterotrophic nutrition so what is heterotrophic nutrition the process of nutrition in which the organism cannot prepare their own food whether they are directly or indirectly depends on other organism for food so here some organisms are there they cannot prepare their own food like plants but they are directly or indirectly depends on other organism for their food like we human beings we are dependent on other organism for food we cannot prepare our own food like this giraffe we have it cannot prepare its own food it if it if it goes to sunlight it will not the food will not be prepared in its body it's it needs to eat something like plants uh, or a grass to get the food so it is dependent on other organism for food so this type of nutrition is known as heterotrophic nutrition so in in heterotrophic nutrition we have another concept that is parasitic nutrition so it is one, one type of heterotrophic nutrition but we have divided in in a subcategory because it is little different here what happens in this type of nutrition the organism obtain nutrition from others body so uh, in the key, in this in the case of this uh, in this one you, you can see it's one type of plant and it is known as penas fly trap here what happens organisms are trapped inside the uh, inside this structure and it, it is killed inside and from that organism it is the nutrition is obtained by the plant 
here also you can see this type of i think you have seen in your in your life uh, some kind of structures are grown on some plants and this structure is known as cascata plant it is one type of plant it is known as cascata plant and it, it is grown on some other plants body and this photosynthesis does not take place in this uh, structure or in this cascata plant they derive the nutrition from others or the host body in which they are growing so the plants on which it grows it uh, derives the nutrition from that plant so the plant on which it grows it is known as host body and the one which grows is known as parasite so this parasite is obtaining or deriving the nutrition from the host body so this type of nutrition is known as parasitic nutrition so i hope uh, up to this much you have understood and if you have any kind of confusion you can ask me and thank you for watching the video